What's the connotation of the word energy? So, so energy has a number of different um, connotations. I'm thinking always there's energy as being not just physicalistic, but a bio-spiritual, physical reality. Okay, entity. Um, so this energy is exploring all different directions. What's really interesting is that one billion, one billionth of it reaches the earth. One billion. That's the wonder of mathematics. One billionth of this energy reaches the earth. And because of this, everything on the earth takes place. One billion. A little slice. Tiny slice of the energy. You see, what, what takes place with this one billionth of energy? Of the, of the sun's energy? Well, all the birds flying, look at my arms moving, the thought taking place in you, all the cathedrals that grew up on the planet, all the civilizations, the forests that crawled across the continents, all of that from one billion. That's what I'm going to talk about right now. The, um, a genetic relationship, the, the way in which this interaction takes place. Uh, how is it that all of this could happen with the sun's energy? Precisely because the, the, the early creatures of the earth uh, invented a way to capture uh, the sun. Right? They had to capture the sun. This great moment, it's one of the great moments in the um, history of the earth when uh, these creatures are making their way on the planet and there's, there's a felt presence to the sun uh, and they began fashioning um, molecules to capture the sun. And what's so interesting is they did this without eyes. <laughs> and without any blueprints. And there were no engineers around. That's pretty good. That's not bad. That's the kind of creativity that's alive in the planet, you see? Now, in particular, they, um, they fabricated, they, they created the chlorophyll molecule. Chlorophyll is the, is the, the molecule that is uh, at work in the chloroplast, in the plants, that captures a photon. Now, capturing a photon, really, you have to dwell on that. A photon is a particle of light. They move extremely quickly. I mean, just go out and play baseball for a while. Now try to imagine capturing a photon. And if you, if you capture it wrong, it will dissolve into heat. So you've got to capture it just right. Very delicate process. <clears throat> they did this with the, the chlorophyll molecule. Now, I... Um, how, well, how should I draw the chlorophyll molecule? Now normally, it's, as you've seen in the chemistry book, when that's drawn, you have um, C's for carbon and Mg for magnesium, little lines. You know, and you have a big stick figure. And it just looks like this absolutely boring clunk of, of matter. But see, but chlorophyll molecule is some kind of a shape. You know, it's, it's energetic. Let's see, some artists would be able to really draw a chlorophyll molecule. This molecule is what captures the light. If it weren't for this molecule, if you took away the chlorophyll molecules, all of the light on the, all of the light on the planet Earth would wither up. All of the Earth would turn into cement. Everything depends on this molecule, right? But we tend to present it as just this crass matter with a couple, you know, carbon molecules and whatnot. I'm saying that this is a supreme event in the history of the Earth. Everything. We owe everything to this. If you want to understand the nature of a mediator, you need to study the chlorophyll molecule. There's another way to talk about this light, namely, it just so happens that the chlorophyll molecule captures the visible light. Interesting. Gee, you know, maybe it could have captured other light. This is the point I'm trying to get at here. You know? So what, what is this notion of visible light? Well, that's the light we can see. You know? That's another definition of visible light. It's the light we can see. 
they're, you're being flooded right now by all kinds of light, um, and um, you have no awareness of whatsoever, even for me, you know? Like, I'm giving off all sorts of light, and you're just missing it entirely. <laughs> There's a lot more going on up here than you're aware of. You're getting maybe 120, or who knows? But now, what, why, so, so when we define visible light, we mean in terms of what we can see. Uh, and you, again, you can write down, it's that, it's that spectrum, but why um, do we call it that visible light? It's because our eyes can capture those photons. And the way in which they capture them is uh, another molecule. It's called the retinal. The retinal molecule in the back of the eye will capture the light. It alters it, its shape, captures the light, alters its shape, and um, activates the central nervous system. And so we have an experience of light. Where did the retinal molecule come from? The retinal molecule is one half of <clears throat> beta carotene. Beta carotene is another molecule like chlorophyll created by these early creatures. In other words, retinal molecules were created by these microorganisms. When we open our eyes, we see with the exact same process that the plants use to capture the sun. And in fact, the only reason we see at all is because the plants figured out a way to capture the sun. See, look how good we are at it. Look at your eyes. We're capturing all kinds of photons, delicately, in a nuanced fashion. And just look at, the, look at the way we can distinguish things. It's entirely because of the subtlety of the earth in its creativity. In fashion, see what's interesting about the earth, it will never start over unless it has to. Very subtle in its way of keeping the great achievements. So once, once it figured out a way to capture life, it wasn't to start over again. It took an enormous amount of um, trial and error. All sorts of molecules were fashioned and didn't work. Finally, a certain family of them were successful. And these were maintained, you see, and worked with. Life always remodels. Always remodels. These were worked with, and so suddenly they come alive within the vertebrate eye. It's, um, so my way of saying it is this. <clears throat> the sensitivity that I have concentrated in my eyes is, is diffusely present over an entire oak tree. The exact same sensitivity. You see, in a certain sense, the, the plants only look at the sun, and the, um, the vertebrate creatures look at everything else but the sun. But it's all the same scene. When the Earth was inventing a way to capture uh, sunlight, it couldn't proceed with uh, imposed expectations. It couldn't say, look, this is the way it's going to be. I've got the molecule, and this is going to suffice. Because if this didn't work out with the sun, um, nothing's in place. So it had to keep working with this until it came up with a molecule that actually conformed to the nature of the sun, do you see? The nature of the sun is captured in the chlorophyll molecule. Likewise, in the retinal molecule. You can look at the chlorophyll molecule, with um, a proper amount of intelligence and see the sun. Uh, a, a way this was said very quickly, by I mean very early, by people was that the sun is in the eye. The sun is in the eye. And this is the case. The sun is in our eye. Because it is, it is, um, it is present in the shape, the actual shape of um, the molecular web. <clears throat> 